So, uh, good evening or good morning, depending on your uh, time zone. Uh, welcome on our, in, our, in, in the second part of, of our uh, initial session uh, on so-called search machine for uh, our uh, COVID-19 project. It's so-called because we know already that it's not a search uh, engine uh, and we need uh, to coin a new name for it. And uh, I would propose uh, that we uh, continue one of the uh, parts uh, of our discussion we started yesterday. One of the things that uh, was discussed quite deeply uh, was the propo uh, proposed by Slava about uh, databases. Slava started uh, talking about uh, MongoDB. Um, Another thing that uh, was discussed uh, in last minutes yesterday uh, was actually a semantic search. Uh, and yet another, uh, let's say, problem or issue uh, was uh, actually the structure of our data. So uh, this whole story about sentences, sections, chapters, or, uh, and versus whole entire documents. So uh, I think Slava, if you like, uh, you can uh, continue on, on uh, MongoDB and mm -hmm. uh, everything you started yesterday explaining to us. Okay, so um, we are talking about uh, infrastructure and what I did, I've got a MongoDB cluster already uh, up and running in, on Kubernetes. So I will share access and uh, I've started to build uh, virtual machine for collaboration and uh, everybody will get actually ex uh, root access so you'll be able to actually to install your own software and uh, the idea actually that everybody can work together and uh, we, we can build something together mm. so this is regarding infrastructure and of course we can help uh, we have slack so we can quickly solve problems uh, i'm really sure about that about uh, components, uh, I really believe that Neo4j uh, is kind of a crucial component because uh, it's about uh, relations. We need to, to extract actually relations from all materials we have and after uh, somehow to connect those relations. And uh, if we'll manage to do that, we'll get some new knowledge, I'm pretty sure. So Neo4j is also installed in this uh, sandbox, and you can try it. And uh, Alex, I think Alex, uh, you can contact me if you need some support. Um, I also have some knowledge about Neo4j, about practical things, how to use it, and uh, I can help you with it. And other thing that I wanted to tell you, uh, Elasticsearch is also operational, and it will because it's on the same cluster so you can actually query it from sandbox and uh, i think you can get kind of maximum performance so it, it's going to be a very efficient process and uh, whoosh also got installed and uh, let me check what it, what next okay so i also got uh, apache so we can just build some website if uh, there are volunteers and uh, I call it labs because I really believe that this is something we are going to do. It's just experiment, highly experimental stuff. We don't know what, what actually we, we can build together, but I think it, it's going to be something amazing. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, dude, you, you did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I probably forgot to, to explain yesterday that I'm actually involved in, in a lot of um, uh, European uh, projects, I mean, really big projects. So like Time Machine uh, has uh, proposed budget 1 billion uh, euro and uh, we have more than 500 partners in this project and it's really difficult to manage and we are really going to build Time Machine. So I will send you a link, it's an um, it's awesome project really. So I have some experience cool. how to you know, speed up processes where it's necessary and also to how to go from closed to open innovation. And uh, yeah, I'll just share some links because I don't want to take all time from uh, this meeting. 
it's that's great thank you a lot uh okay so maybe just to cover a bit more that yesterday was started but not sufficiently uh elaborated uh, another story that uh, we need to focus are let's say user stories or user cases and uh, how we uh, uh, gather let's say intelligence on uh, our potential users and uh, in which direction um, certain functionalities of our database let's say search machine should go Um, so I believe that Alex actually uploaded a couple of user stories and uh, part of our collection process is just uh, taking it to the team leaders and having the team leaders uh, communicate with their teams. If you were going to use something like this, then what would you use it for and, and uh, why and how? Um, so at the moment, I think there are two or maybe three. We have an internal section, external section, and something from a biomedical okay. person, Hillary Adragna or something. Um, so we do have some, and I think we should continue with this uh, taking uh, team leaders into their teams and getting those user stories and putting them in the docs. Um, Imran created a Google Drive for, uh, well, a folder on Google Drive for us to upload all of this stuff, all this documentation, until such time as we have what I think Slava was working on. I'm not sure, like a dataverse or like a, a versioned uh, da data set management system or something? No, no, might... it's it's called Dataverse and uh, basically it's kind of a uh, leading system now and uh, in, in the world and it was developed originally by Harvard University but I'm leading this development in Europe. So, gotcha. if you, yeah, so I have a few teams and uh, I'm able actually to extend the functionality both on backend and frontend level. So and I just have a question. Um, yeah. for, um, the, we have the data in the bucket, right, in the Google Cloud yeah. bucket, and we also have Dataverse. What, uh, what is Dataverse and how, like, how would we use it? Okay, so first of all, it's in the same location because Dataverse actually is keeping <laughs> all data in volume, and this volume you can just mount as a bucket. So oh, after you will start okay. your notebook, you, you can do something with your data, and uh, if you'll get some interesting results, you can put... Uh, back in uh, Dataverse with description uh, about process and probably uh, about some data, external data sources that you used. And it will create provenance. So it will, um, it will be new information stored about uh, what actually new you did and what kind of tools you applied and this kind of information. So as people will be able to reproduce it and continue from, from the place where actually you stopped. Got it. Okay. The purpose of Dataverse, we can just combine all efforts. We can work on the same thing. And after someone is finished, new one can come and can continue. Or just create clone, like, like in GitHub, and continue from like previous step. Mm -hmm. And is, is this only accessible by API, or is there some GUI, or? Uh, yeah, it's, it has both GUI and uh, API. And I would say we have different types of API, I believe like eight at the moment. So it's really easy to transfer files to Dataverse and get it back by uh, simple Python also. And we are usually do, doing uh, all these processes with Jupyter Notebook. So I don't think you will get some problems with it. That's great. I mean, like, impressive. Uh, okay, so uh, what uh, would be the next uh, subtopic uh, we want to cover? You could talk about the, because um, Elasticsearch is already up and running. Um, you could talk about the other half, the semantic search. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, Just quickly on the, on the user stories to wrap it up. Uh, who's going to relay that to the team leads? Just so that they can start thinking about it. Uh, I know Christine's already uh, started. Um, I, could, I could bring it over to the other team leads, like Maya and... Uh, <laughs> Dan, I think, I'm not sure if he's here, but I'll also uh, ping Dan as well. Well, Imran, I, I can work for you on that. And as mm. also, I want to bring uh, something to your ten, you guys' attention is that Google recently, um, they started to push some sort of like tables with data in canonical formats. And that might be something that many teams will have to start to produce. Um, I can share that link here. 
and I think for a use case, it would be um, good to for you know people to generate these kind of tables to facilitate people like generating these kind of tables. Okay, cool. Um, I think it would be good to discuss it offline, but if you could just dump it into the, the Google Doc. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Cool. So, uh, well, we got, so there's Christine, Dan, uh, other Dan, and Maya, right? Those are the four people that um, will be involved. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Cool. So semantic search. So may I ask, to, uh, for instance, uh, Brandon, to explain a bit about the idea of semantic search because you did it last time and it was suburb in the sense that it's uh, very uh, like uh, it's not very technical, but uh, giving an, a general idea. Uh, of semantic search in comparison to elastic search. Could you do it now? Just sure. Um, like, like in a very simple way, elastic search is just based on words. The, the words themselves are features in documents. Um, so anything that's limit, limitized or tokenized can, can be absorbed into this TFIDF index and searches based on the TFIDF index in relation to the query normalized by uh, term saturation and length. So it's basically just like keyword search on crack. Uh, you have the vector search, which is uh, or semantic search is essentially embedding a text into a, a high dimensional vector space. Um, done by running it through a natural language processing model like Spacey or BERT or something that has learned the distribution of words in their contexts and then learned to um, uh, give a representation of the meaning of that sentence uh, uh, in a high dimensional space. So by measuring the distance or the cosine similarity between two different vectors, you have a general sense of the uh, amount of difference in semantic content. Um, so. Uh, I heard Imran ask earlier how we were going to control the, uh, um, like make sh making sure that everything is embedded into the same space. Uh, we can talk about that uh, at some point later, but essentially the idea is that if we embed one uh, version of the data into uh, this embedding space, then we need to use exactly the same model to embed everything else, um, at least at the level of sentence or whatever. So uh, yeah. But something weird happened today. Like in the, the data that AI2 released for a V8, um, there's actually an entire folder, or there's a folder with a, with a CSV called embeddings or Cord19 embeddings or something. I assume that these are document embeddings, but I don't, there's no documentation for how they were created or why or for what. So uh, yeah, we, we might have document vectors already, but we need to figure out how they, how they did it and whether we can apply that to the sentences and the uh, paragraphs and stuff. Don't open this file. It may be an alien file or something like that. Um, yeah, the only other thing really I would weird. say is that uh, we can we can use different strategies for um, creating embeddings for different levels of text. I wouldn't recommend doing like a spacey vector embedding for an entire document because it, it would be too noisy. It takes the vectors of every single one of the words in the document and averages them together, um, and you might just get like a kind of blob of of some random semantic content. Um, it's much more effective at the sentence level. Um, at the paragraph level, slightly less effective. Um, and with spacey models, it doesn't take word, uh, word order into account. So it's literally just an averaging of all of the tokens in the document. Uh, if you want something that is sensitive to, um, sensitive to word order, syntactic, uh, syntactic order, or negation or something, then you want to use something like BERT um, or something that's been trained on bidirectional texts. Yeah, that, that's that's the point, and uh, of course, it's not, now we like can we um, skip over to the let's smoothly skip over to the let's say subtopic of data structure, namely we have sentences, but we want to have also a representation for the whole documents and sections, paragraphs, uh, sub parts of the text, and uh, it will hold also for uh, vectors because we can represent, uh, for instance, a vector of a sentence also uh, with in the context of a vector of the whole paragraph and then uh, in, this, uh, in the context of the 
vector of the whole document. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, we can merge three, actually three vectors into one huge vector, giving us uh, not only just uh, the, the, the semantic uh, value uh, in n dimensional space about the sentence, but also about uh, its uh, particular context uh, within a paragraph and within a, a whole entire document. Uh, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. uh, um, so, uh, when you're talking about uh, semantic search, what actually do you mean? Because I don't see ontology in what you're saying. Uh, okay, and, it's yeah. uh, uh, semantic search would be something like a nearest neighbor uh, uh, search yeah. in dimensional space. So, for instance, we are looking uh, for uh, you have a string as a search query. We uh, translate this uh, string into uh, into a vector that is in the same uh, n-dimensional space that all other our data, and we are looking now for 10, 10 20 n uh, nearest neighbors of uh, this particular search query. Mm -hmm. But still, I, I I do believe that semantic search in the common sense is something about ontology, where actually you you can get some kind of meaning uh, about what actually you're analyzing. So, for example, if there is COVID-19, it should be linked to Wikipedia about COVID-19. This is how we can understand ah, okay. what it's about. Uh, right. that's, I think that's a different type of definition because at least, I mean, Bannon can uh, say a bit more about it, I think. Um, it's in NLP. Uh, semantic, like uh, like semantic in the context of uh, embeddings and vectors, it's just this representation, uh, and it's n-dimensional representation that is straight from huge uh, corpora like Wikipedia or mm -hmm. Google uh, or Gutenberg project, uh, where uh, theoretically each uh, word or piece of word um, being modeled uh, in terms of uh, its uh, uh, direct context so mm -hmm. uh, for instance theoretically words that are, have similar uh, meaning should have uh, also similar position in this n-dimensional uh, vector space mm -hmm. okay i've got it so so it's basically only suitable for nlp and uh, if you want actually to merge all those data sets uh, about covid 19 from different sources we have no for definitely it's not possible. You need you need actually you have to all those text in a raw text format mm -hmm. and uh, put them in one single model, having this mm -hmm. same set of uh, weights, uh, hyperparameters, etc. And then you can produce, let's say, uh, their uh, n-dimensional representation that is uh, that is concise, that's okay. uh, homogeneous. So I, I, I might be able to just uh, sort of put this into one sentence. So if you're using elastic search, you're using lexical search. It's based on words. Yeah. If you're using vector spaces, vector space models, you're using semantic search. And if you're trying to link it to an actual entity in the real world, that's called entity linking, um, which is uh, something else that you need to train other models for. Mm -hmm. um, but generally based on, like you can even train a vector space model on entities themselves and then uh, teach a, an entity linking model to understand the relationship between tokens and text and the actual representation of it mm -hmm. linking to wikipedia or whatever and uh, can you think about some some kind of workflow that uh, will allow us actually to link all data sets uh, that collected and exposed in, in structured way like excel, excel files about i don't know disease amount in some country so we can query um, elastic search and we can put links in some kind of vector space if we develop some kind of ontology for like the the different features of a particular data set then yes but i would say like even really large corporations have difficulty with this with tons of people on it there are so many data sets coming out so um it depends on how focused we want to be and how much information we want to catalog about every data set how much time can we spend cleaning it how much time can we spend understanding it before we index it can we index it or can we just do a link uh, that, that's probably like another project okay but, but uh look uh, here we have almost unlimited resources so we can contact all people that are actually responsible for those data sets and we can ask them to provide right uh, references to us 
Sure. If somebody has time to write all of those organizations and, and know what they're uh, asking. Yeah, so, but this is different. <laughs> it's an organizational topic. So I think if we, if we can find some volunteers to contact those people, uh, it can work, no? In theory, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of volunteers. Right? <laughs> I have a legend of them. Okay. Uh, there is something. Um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I need to admit a new person. Just I'm really bad at multitasking. Uh, okay, there is something more about uh, semantic search, at least on this uh, level of discussion. Uh, we would like to talk about like some questions about and uh, general purpose of semantic search. Oh yeah, so. Uh, Lucas, could you, um, like I never used Annoy or uh, yeah. the other uh, uh, libraries, face. could you just, well I, I have face, but we have, you have Annoy with something else, I remember, right? Uh, 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 yeah, I, I think I, uh, I was talking about Woosh, but Woosh is yeah, a semi, is elastic <laughs> search actually, but uh -huh. in pure Python, so it's like the same story. Um, okay. So, um, do you have, is your annoy code uh, ready? Like, can it be? Yeah, I mean, actually, annoy is very easy because it's a, a, a library uh, done and developed by uh, by a team uh, uh, of Spotify. So it's a whole library. Uh, in Python, you can em employ it in, so in something like three lines of your code. Like, just it's a. Th it's it's quite easy in the sense that you need all vectors. You put those vectors into you fit uh, the model uh, uh, with your vectors. You build it. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a matter of time to build a, a let's say a forest of trees because uh, it works with with trees. And then you have an object uh, that you can uh, you can. Um, with, with, with which you can catalog your new, new uh, vectors in and, terms of... And is it ready though? Like, can Slava uh, put it up right now? Yeah, as, I mean, it's ready. We have already vectors. So for instance, with the vectors from uh, Science Spacey, I, I can do uh, the set because the vectors from uh, Science Spaces are already in our data and we okay. can... Uh, we, you, you, you can do semantic search queries. Uh, okay. Another question is how many from them are meaningful? Uh, what the kind of hyperparameters about the number of trees uh, you need uh, to set in, etc. It's like a different question, but in terms of employment, that's so it's relatively like, easy. Are they, are they containerized? Are they, like, do you have like a kind of a, an HTTP server on them to at least... No, 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 it's, I mean, like, quite easy. You, you install uh, as, uh, Annoy as a library in Python. Uh, you need yeah. just a, a lot of RAM if you have a lot of uh, your vectors. And yeah. then uh, you you build this, this forest of trees. Um, and okay. then you can... Yeah, sorry, Brandon. Oh, I was, I was just going to say, is it, is it available to Slava right now? Like, can we plug it in like literally right now or do we need to do anything else? No, it's like uh, when, uh, because uh, Slava installed already uh, Woosh. So in the same way, we can install also uh, Annoy in the sense, mm -hmm. pip install Annoy, uh, Annoy. Uh, it's installed and of course the, it, another question is which kind of vectors you use to, to train, um, to train the, or to build this model, because of course it's, it depends on, uh, like a lot of things would, will depend on, on which kind of vectors we are going to use. It's back vectors, spacey vectors, because uh, you, Brandon, already mentioned that uh, um, spacey vectors are actually average of all words in a document or paragraph, and uh, I prob probably we will have a completely different results with bird vectors that are built and constructed in a completely different way. So that's another topic, but uh, in terms of employment of uh, uh, application of annoy library, it's as easy as whoosh in the sense it's... it's like are they, okay. are they so, at least? Sorry? Are they like, are they like 
ready as like Docker files, ready to just kind of put it into Kubernetes? Yeah, I mean, like you just install them as a Python lib standard Python library, and you can uh, they, they are already pre-compiled because originally they are written in C++, but uh, for the Python and uh, API, it's everything done. The only one thing you need are those vectors, but it's the, like like the data set story, and uh, it's not about uh, annoy itself. Yeah, so the, I mean, the short answer is yes. Yes, it's ready. We have the vector files, they're in a Google bucket. Um, we just need to install annoy and then uh, have it built in somehow. So the, the, the actual question is, how do we put together the semantic search with the uh, elastic search? So, um, Okay, so within the next 24 hours, what we should do is focus on just getting those vectors on the on the instance that Slava has set up, um, install Illinois. Uh, they're all indexed by the sentence ID, so uh, this this can be our first test use case. And I think within the next 48 hours, we should have something working. What we need is a front end that takes the score from Elasticsearch and aggregates it with the score of uh, Annoy, um and see how that works. Uh, I don't do front end stuff, so if anybody is able to do like a flask, a quick flask thing we don't have uh wait wait, wait, wait uh, sorry to interrupt you i see a comment from john he knows a guy who actually built uh, annoy so we can probably ask him to, to join and uh, to do something uh, uh, for john, john could you elaborate on that okay. guys sure. sorry um, to jump, but we have to jump off to another call i think slava too actually with the yeah knowledge. because um, yeah but uh, yeah, okay, um, you guys i'll see if you get going as well <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you in that call. Uh, okay, so hi. Uh, hi. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm leaving also. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, so uh, John, uh, could you could you talk? I mean, could you speak? Yeah, sure. Now. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, I've talked a couple of times at various meetups, and uh, Eric Bernhardson is uh, based out of New York, is the CTO of a company here. Um, so I've uh, you know met with him a few times and uh, generally a pretty helpful guy. So if we run into any problems with Annoy, um, definitely can reach out to him. I know that he has two kids, so he's probably a little too busy to um, contribute much, but uh, happy to reach out if we end up you know, running in into, into any problems there. Um, more generally though, uh, uh, my thought is that it might be worth at least maybe as a second step, um, considering something like HTTP LDA, um, as opposed to, you know, going the vector model direction. Um, because, uh, you know, my understanding is that some of what we might want to do is to actually uh, understand uh, if there are latent topics, um, you know, embedded within this, as opposed to predefining a number of clusters. Um, and so something uh, like a hierarchical model with uh, stick breaking like HTTP LDA would actually be a really interesting uh, exploratory data analysis tool. Um, so just two cents. Okay, cool. I mean, very interesting. And I think we should uh, talk about it. Like uh, we need a bit more uh, time and space to, to focus on your point uh, because now we are run all, uh, out of time. Uh, actually, it's already th more than 30 minutes, and I think it would be reasonable just to stop here. And my proposal would be because tomorrow there's no uh, general uh, daily call, uh, so maybe we can uh, take also a day off in terms of uh, webinars, and we can meet uh, once again on Monday, the same time, half past uh, 10 uh, Pacific time or half past uh, seven Central Europe time. Uh, and we can uh, continue uh, this, this discussion. Uh, uh, what, what, what do you think? Uh, I think I have a conflict, um, but uh, yeah. Okay, we can, we can arrange also another, uh, another time and, and uh, tomorrow, over tomorrow. Uh, I think it's not a big problem for uh, yep. for uh, most of us. I mean, like we are, many of us are flexible, many are not, but still, I think this is something that uh, it's possible to arrange. Yeah, for me, uh, tomorrow would be much better. Uh, you know, I have a day job, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so a, a quick uh, a poll. Uh, do we want uh, a call tomorrow or not? Five seconds to decide. Yes, no, yes, no. One yes, one no. Okay, let, let, let's talk on Monday. Uh, John, maybe we can uh, talk later on, at maybe tomorrow, over tomorrow, over, over tomorrow, I mean on, on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, if you like it. Uh, we, we are on, always on, on Slack, so I don't think it's, it will be a, a big thing to, it won't be a big thing to, to keep uh, in touch. Yeah, um, happy to have a individual call as well. So that, you know, uh, yeah, so I'm not only individual with me, but we can arrange something like two, three uh, persons that are uh, yeah. much like very interested in in uh, your perspective and uh, in in uh, your ideas about uh, semantic search in in the let's say in the subtopic of semantic search. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to. Put uh, this uh, recording and uh, this this uh, uh, webinar on uh, on YouTube, and uh, we continue this discussion also on Slack, in terms of ideas, uh, proposals, anything uh, you would like to contribute or comment on. So uh, any uh, any comments of you or uh, sum ups or Silence. Really? Okay, no, it's quite disturbing for me. No <laughs> one wants to talk. Sounds good. Yeah, sure, Christine. No, I mean, I mean, it sounds good. Ah, uh, sounds uh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just confirming. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, have a nice uh, Saturday evening or morning or have a nice day or night, depending on your time zone, really confusing a bit. Thank you. Uh, okay, so, uh, and uh, we see uh, us on mm, on Monday. Mm? Monday or uh, other uh, uh, time slots, uh, maybe. Okay, perfect. So once again, thank you for, uh, for being and for sharing. And I think that we can, uh, we will have a really a great conversation on on, the, on that project. Okay. Thanks, so, Lukas. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye.